Hi, my name is Oliver Brown. It's another session of Two Mugs. It's Wednesday, the 15th of December, and I'm very glad to be here with Steve Manster again. Thanks for joining. Hi, Ollie. Good to be back. And uh, again, uh, a big thank you to our friend Ryan that I uh, did the chat with last week. Really, I think, a, a valuable listen and uh, interesting to see that um, our contrarian views may have actually uh, been right because we, we have seen a little bit of a retracement over the last week as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was fascinating to hear the two of you talk. Um, and I know it's very early, so I'd say I wish I'd been there. But it, the other part of me was like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy not to have been in that one. But uh, it was fascinating to hear you talk exactly about that, that contrary view. Um, so yeah, we, we should have Ryan in uh, in more often as a guest speaker. Definitely easy to arrange. <laughs> so yeah, um, we have had lots of volatility over the last couple of days. Uh, today we're at two three seven fifteen. Um, you know, it, uh, up from yesterday a little bit, whilst that was down from the day before. Um, how are we? How are we supposed to plan in these incredibly volatile times? Uh well that that that's a very open ended question you've asked me or <laughs> how indeed i think the same way that we've been planning for the last 18 months through um pandemics and everything else is that we need to make fast decisions and not be too hard on ourselves if it goes wrong because we only have a certain amount of information available to us at any one point in time and, and we need to either turn right or turn left, uh, for want of a better analogy, buy or not buy. Mm. And I, I think it, it's making sure that we might make the right choices or make the right decisions to enable our, our business or your business to, to move forward, to have coffee, to roast um, or, or to adapt. And I think that those things of adapting is, is very challenging. Um, especially for businesses that have very defined blends or expectations or communication to customers about what they do. Um, mm. To hold that in a, in a volatile market is, is very challenging. So um, how do we do it? We, I think we've got to make decisions, but not beat ourselves up if that decision does not always go 100% to plan because we, we, you can't, be looking backwards at the past it, it's it's a not a fair analogy on anybody to judge yourself that way yeah ultimately you you need coffee in the sheds to to roast to make money to keep going and you've got to make decisions to make sure that that's the case yeah i think i mean by by definition we've talked about being short or being long long having coffee having more coffee short needing coffee um a roaster by definition is always short. They always need green coffee to, to turn it into roasted coffee and the product that they sell. So no matter if it's today, tomorrow, or a year from now, that, that business is going to need that input. And we, we need to be planning accordingly. And again, we, we, we've been through the, the last, the last times we've really talked about this, topic and planning is taking longer shipments mm -hmm. are taking longer we're seeing challenges come out about ningbo and other ports in china now which could again have a, a slowing effect to the container trade we're seeing omnicron start to bubble away in certain jurisdictions that that could have a knock-on effect again to what we've seen it's maybe not the actual equipment or the vessels it's the time that people can transit through places so china has a seven week quarantine process for shipping crews and things like these bizarre things that you wouldn't think of that are really slowing everything down yeah and now we're coming into christmas we're coming into the lunar new year more parcels are being jammed into the same uh, funnel than ever before as well. So it's uh, it's definitely challenging. Now, now here's another challenging question for you. Um, 
what advice would you give to uh, those customers that, that have, have moved from sort of quite a traditional model of, of purchasing? Maybe their you know, purchasing might be done by one or, or as are, is often the case, two or three different members of a team. Trying to get those team members to come together to make a decision is challenging. And often forecasting almost goes out the window for these, these companies that are, you know, project a year ahead, project six months ahead, you know, how can they possibly forecast that far out when it's so volatile now? Like, you know, would you all make sure that you build more fat in, make sure that you uh, uh, make decisions faster? What sort of like, you know, based on what we know is happening, what, what, what can roasters do to, to protect themselves from this new volatile way of doing business? Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, we model our own business every year, but if we were able to predict what the futures price or, or the procurement situation will be 12 months from now, yeah, it will be a, a very easier scenario. I think the first analogy, and this is my favorite analogy of all budgets, all budgets are inherently wrong. Some are useful. <laughs> Um, and especially when you're dealing with procurement on a commodity structure or volatility structure where we've had four years where we've had consistency. If we go back the previous four years to 2010 to 2015, we saw volatility again. So mm -hmm. those businesses that have been active and had a, a defined procurement model probably through that period, five years ago, more, probably have a stronger understanding of what is possible than um, boards and teams that have only come into a situation over the last four to five years. Yeah. So, so that's one thing, experience. The other thing is people should be talking within the industry. And I think coffee is actually a really remarkable industry that everyone is actually very helpful to each other if you ask the question. Yeah. Um, I was at an industry event last week and it's a pleasure actually to be in coffee because mo most people are happy to, to talk. You, you may not get all the details about their things, their situation, but you can get an understanding about how different companies are playing. And I, I think it's really about asking those questions, whether it's to the procurement partners that you work with, whether it's to your downstream customers that distribute your product and serve your product, whether it's with even your competitors. Um, and it's interesting, I, I've worked in origin countries where the three biggest, my two biggest competitors, I had regular chats with them uh, once a, more than once a week on how mm -hmm. they're going. And we're competing, we're selling to the same customers, we're trying to win different things. But at the same time, we're trying to operate in the same environment. And yeah. we want all of us to succeed. I don't think anybody wants to see uh, another company necessarily go out of business in this current environment. And I, I would really just encourage boards and to, to sometimes, or procurement teams to be humble, to ask questions. Mm. Uh, to go out and, and talk to people. Mm. I, I myself sit on a, a bit of a learning board where I, I'm a part of 12, uh, 12 other people that sit on a board from a diverse range of businesses. And that gives me a good opportunity to talk about situations of, of what's happening in different industries on a monthly basis. Yeah. Because if I only try to navigate this current 12 months with my own experience or, or what's happening within my own, it's going to be very, very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. And we, we need to have external ideas. We need to have a wider understanding of what's happening or happening across um, complementary industries yeah. so, so we can make better decisions. I really encourage whether it's individuals, green buyers, or, or buying boards, to, to, to make that time to, to talk to others because it's actually more powerful. And 
the worst somebody can say when you ask a question is no. Yeah. And 90% of the time, no one's going to say no. So you've just got to be brave and, and find those people that you find are, are complementary to your decision process. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And in terms of sort of like, you know, that is, is you know, good advice for, for, for managing the mechanics of the company as a whole and, and, and where to go. But in terms of sort of pricing sort of uh, uh, levels, we know shipping is going to be that much higher. You know, it's, it's tripled in, in some cases. You know, we must therefore be factoring that in. We know, you know, that, that prices are probably not going to come back to us for a, you know, six month period at least. You know, sh should should those always be factored in going forward until, or is it, as you say, you know, we don't know what we don't know, so we can't really plan for it. We've just got to take take the, the slices of the cake off as, as we go. Yeah, I, I think, again, putting my uh, accounting financial sort of hat on for a minute, people that have got to build models and stress test those models on what happens if the price changes 20% or comes back 20%, when will that happen? When can I actually take advantage of that? Because mm -hmm. if we think about buying forward today, where you need to basically have your supply in place more or less today for the next three three months and probably the three to six months as well, depending yeah. on volumes and the uniqueness of the product that you're pr trying to procure. Yeah. Now, if we look at six months from now seven months from now we're going to be at the start of brazilian harvest the brazilian harvest is lower are we really going to see probably a, a big retracement in the number that we have today it, yeah. it's fairly unlikely until we're going to see the supply and demand equation balance yeah so i think that people almost need to understand that can my business survive and operate on the current cost structure if the current yeah. cost structure comes back then that's going to be beneficial yeah. to the bottom line yeah what they also need to be thinking about are what are the strategic levels that i could go out and procure and at least start to average my price down or secure my price what am i comfortable with over the next yeah. six to yeah. 12 months yeah and that might not be the price today but a team or an individual probably has to react quite quickly if the price sits in their window because it may only sit there for a day or two days given what we've seen with, with dips in the market and volatility at the moment. Yeah. That's... And I, I, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people waiting for the dips. So when we hit 230, um, Recently, I think there was a wave of people again coming in to buy coffee. And from a differential basis, we're not seeing Colombians get cheaper. Yeah. We're actually seeing Brazilians get more expensive. Yeah. And it it's challenging from that regard, I think. Yeah. But you've got to know your numbers. And when you see your numbers, you've got to be prepared to to probably book that number. If, if that's the number that you put into your models. Mm. And that's the thing that I would really recommend people to be, to be brave on. It's sort of like, oh, if I wait another two or three cents, it'll be better. Mm. But waiting and hoping is, is not necessarily the strategy. If you see those numbers, then sometimes okay. you've got to go. And you can't necessarily budget hey, these were my numbers last year or the year before or the year before because the market is just not going to retrace there anymore or not yeah. retrace there any enough time soon. So in doing comparisons, it's very difficult. Um, I mean, our projections for next year is I'm going to need double the amount of uh, liquidity to run my business than I yeah. did a year before. Yeah, yeah, and and these are things that we're out there talking to our, our partners now to ensure that we've got access to that. And I think people need to be having the, those forward conversations um, within their business as well. 
for sure. The other thing that, that's really interesting and, and the prices that we're at today and that we have been last week, this is no longer a just a problem for the big end of town. You know, and that's what's really interesting to me is to see, you know, smaller companies, companies that perhaps have, have just dealt in specialty are suddenly finding that, you know, it's having a huge impact on them too, because, uh, you know, one, their their product is also moving up significantly as as the the, the C market does. And, you know, quality is being impacted because people don't need to do as much for, um, uh, you know, the same amount of money they're getting this time last year. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, fascinating as well. The smaller companies now need to be thinking on the same levels and, and you know, being aware of the same volatilities and also protecting forward. It, it, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. And, and there's other things going against um, the, the smaller end of town with just logistics costs adding probably a larger layer if we're moving smaller things in smaller volumes generally that the logistics cost per kilo or per unit just becomes higher uh as well the dollar um the aussie dollar is probably a fair bit lower right now around 71 than um it has been if they were looking at something two months ago or three months ago so even yeah. those sort of things become really challenging yeah um a scary thing i've even seen with australia post where even those like ourselves are committed to shipping stuff in recyclable packaging um may incur a higher cost from australia post because it's a different kind of packaging or something so yeah, there's all these other layers yeah. that are, are just coming out of left field and, and they might be of a few cents here but on someone that's a uh, sort of pure e-commerce or uh, re not retail but online business sort of yeah. thing, then then that could be a, a percentage of cost increase that's quite chunky. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's there's, there's no rest at the moment for challenges. Yeah, particularly coming into Christmas because I know we're all incredibly busy and and. Um, you know, everything's everyone's uh, uh, all hands to the pump at this time of year. Yeah, I'm, I'm still wait, waiting for the for the Christmas uh, pause, but it, it's it's just not happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, aren't we all? Aren't we all? I think that there's not a, there's not a single uh, uh, company related to coffee that is um, you know not yeah mm. not in that same headspace. Look. Exactly. See, on that note, um, I, I know you've got a lot to do. I've got a lot to do. Thank you very much for giving me the time today um, to talk about where we're at in, in the markets and also sort of some of those challenges uh, facing uh, those of us dealing with the volatilities. Really appreciate your time. And sure, Ollie. Always, always a pleasure. And um, good luck to everyone. There'll be a short and sharp video next week and ollie and i promise not to sing any christmas carols so uh, stay tuned all the best thank you everyone thanks steve okay. bye, bye.